2004 so right before they brought the Hawkeye into the mix it's just kind of that stereotypical what do you think of an STI this is what you think of an STI STI which is also known as Subaru Technica International which I always forget people always tell me all the time hey David what does STI stand for and I'm like it's, it's on the tip of my tongue it, I, I, I can't remember but that's what it stands for there's a reason why I'm doing another Subaru and it's because this one has a lovely story behind it this one belongs to my friend Matt and it has been an adventure for almost two years he has been working on this car we were hanging out at a car meet one night and he showed up with his new Subaru you know is very quick 400 something horsepower and I go for a ride with him I was like sweet that was fun pretty quick car and then it had problems right after that it was just a downhill spiral it was like an old school medieval spiral staircase just keep going deeper into it it became slightly a money pit he almost sued a shop over parts it was just an absolute mess every time we were at a car meet he would look at me and he didn't even have to say anything i would look at him and go so how's the subaru and he would just want to walk away because there was always some issue, whether it was injectors, tuning, transmission, everything. Instead of wasting my time saying all the little nitpicky things that is done to this car, I am just going to put the entire build list in the description below. And why am I doing that? The entire car is touched. There is nothing left other than the transmission. The transmission is still stock. Everything in this motor is good theoretically for a thousand plus horsepower in a boxer. So you're really squeezing out the power out of the ethanol and you have ID2000 injectors. It's, it's enough fuel for enough combustion to have a really good time. The car makes 512 wheel horsepower all the way around. And 500 horsepower is very much my favorite horsepower. <laughs> and that is why it's my favorite horsepower. Only thing about Subarus though is when you go around corners, if you're not used to all wheel drive, oh man, you can screw yourself. All wheel drive, as I always say, gives you this false interpretation of invincibility, and you're not. <laughs> now, the last turbo all-wheel drive car I drove was Christopher Durr's Evo 9, which had 968 wheel horsepower. Now, when I did that review video, it was kind of hard to tell, was I revving it out all the way? And I was. And the reason I say that is because those drag radials hooked up so quick that hitting the rev limiter happened so fast that you're so focused on the road ahead of you trying not to die that it's, it's really enjoyable, but at the same time, you just it's hard to use. This, you're on street tires, you're on a back road, and how can you beat the sound of a boxer for a four-cylinder? For being four-cylinders, they're extremely torquey, and they're a ton of fun. expensive to work on and build yeah I'm gonna be honest with you that's why you'll see people like our chase car behind us buy Evos instead and I'm not gonna make this a comparison test because that's not fair but a lot of the times people will go the 4G63 route because they tend to make power a little bit easier but Subarus at the same time they have that personality behind them they have that little bit of flair to them and that's what makes them so fun you have the big wing on the back which in my opinion is the greatest lunch lunch tray of all time 
the turbo on this car is a Garrett GT3582R, so not a little guy. It's so funny when you look at a Subaru's motor because if you don't know what you're looking at, it just looks like a mess. You look at it, you have piping going everywhere, you have your fuel lines trying to get around everything because the boxer layout is just such an unorthodox layout that it's just kind of confusing if you don't know what you're doing. When you see that little turbo hidden, you, you're like, oh, well that's not stock. Your stock Subaru turbos are like the palm of your hand. They're little guys, little, little guys. But when you add the drama of a bigger turbo and you reinforce it, that's when things get really fun. Now I probably sound like a broken record here, but I mean, you're at, I'm at 4,000 RPM right now. Fourth gear, roll into it. 500 horsepower, 600 horsepower is before, like I always say, it's before when the world changes. 700 horsepower, that's when things get kind of hairy. And also, it's hard to enjoy a back road with 700 horsepower. This though, wow, for these kind of roads, it's so fun, especially with the great Subaru steering position. And just the seats, I mean, they kind of hold you in place, but uh, at the same time, I'm a little guy, so that, that does not help. But today on this beautiful, beautiful spring day, having the boxer sound, that blow off valve, that is just the best. It's hard to beat a day like today. The struts on this car are JDM struts, so not normal ones. And also it's on springs, and you might notice it's pretty low to the ground. So you have that nice center of gravity, but at the same time, you can clear everything. That is the important thing. You can go over railroad tracks, you can go over speed bumps, and it's not too much of a sweat. Another thing is to get this horsepower out of this car, like I said earlier, it's on E85, which in Virginia is extremely hard to get your hands on. There's two pumps within an hour, and that's it. So. You wanna get on it all the time because you get nice little blow off sounds when you roll into things like third gear and, and let off and you get that very stereotypical tuner kid sound. But that's a problem with people like me because I just wanna do that all day. That's not good. But at the same time, it's so good. Every time you shift it too, you get this nice pop sound. It's very satisfying in between gears. To rev it all the way out is extremely satisfying. And it's fun, it's not too scary, but it's a weekend car. The funny thing is, Matt daily drives a Lancer, which you would probably be like, what? How could he? They're rivals. So that's why I always make the joke, are they brothers or are they rivals? Are the Evos and the STIs really at war? Because I see, see them hanging out a lot together. The car, when you come out of second to third gear, likes to not, it breaks loose just a little bit, but it's more of just kind of a swerve and then it catches, if that makes sense. It's not crazy, it's not spinning all four 100% of the time, it's just for that one moment, you have to be aware the car will go left or right. front mount intercooler and you'll see a lot of Subaru people actually stick with the top mount but I mean it's hard to beat a front mount intercooler just hanging out there it gives it a much more menacing look to it people who want to go over 500 horsepower need a front mount on a Subaru it's it's not a choice it's a requirement legitly impressed me. I am happy to say it impressed me because once you finally go into boost, it's a little hairy when you kick it into boost. But once you get into boost, it's a very smooth transition. It didn't break up, which is very common. It didn't do any of the weird little issues. Moore did a fantastic job with this tune, and I'm happy to say that. All right, guys, I want to thank every single one of you for watching this lovely little Subaru. I hope you all enjoyed it. It was a fantastic car to drive. And I'm happy to say that this is my favorite Subaru I've ever driven. I drove the 2015 STI recently, and Subaru, you need to go back to your roots because this was way more fun. See you next time. Uno, dos, tres.
gotta love this. I know, the super sunglasses.